Greetings, everyone. Chunks of Earth here. How are you? Happy Sunday. The weather's beautiful here in sunny South Florida. Mm. Well, I'd like to talk to you, or like to briefly mention, a little bit about science and how the Republican Party is completely devoid of any sort of science support that tends to question their opinions or, or assumptions and assertions. A few days ago, Bobby Jindal, who is a complete embarrassment to the science and education system in Louisiana and continues to head a system that is failing miserably in standards of education, mentioned that he wanted to, the GOP to stop being the party of stupid. Uh, and he was urging other members of the party to come out and, and begin to show how intelligent they are and how, how they do have really good things to offer from a conservative standpoint. And I do agree that there are some good things offered from a conservative standpoint. I like to consider myself somewhat independent and willing to listen to both sides. So it pained me deeply when just a few days ago, a week ago, that a product of our Florida education system said that he wasn't a scientist and did not know the age of the earth. This gentleman is, of course, Senator Marco Rubio. Now, even though Mr. Rubio is a graduate of political science, which I would argue is not a science at all, uh, based on the lack of hypotheses and hard evidence and, and consistency in results, um, so political science is not a science. It doesn't exist in the science realm. But this gentleman, Mr. Rubio, is on the science committee. So I found an article from a conservative website, uh, Human Events, and it supports Mr. Rubio and claims that by asking him what about the age of the earth was a gotcha question made, made to make him look foolish uh, unnecessarily and create a firestorm. So here is the site. Now, while reading through this, it tells you what the, the answer was. And I really don't understand how someone who's sitting on the science committee representing the American people can be comfortable explaining that he's not a scientist and his opinion contradicts the opinions and results of scientists around the world something like 97 uh, percent not only does he not have a conclusion but he states that there are multiple theories on the age of the earth and how the universe was created and he wants to teach all the theories because that's what liberty and justice is all about you know teach every opinion that he approves of um, now I don't disagree that parents should be able to teach their children what their faith says but I want a learned professional teaching my children what science says and Mr. Rubio goes on to say it was Earth was created in seven days or seven actual eras, but he never mentions what science says, which is the Earth is roughly four and a half billion years old. Uh, and this article continues to say that the that Mr. Rubio was blindsided. Now, it, it goes on to say that these questions are designed. Uh, this this quote here. It's all about finding wedge issues where people have been instructed that it's not okay to dis agree to disagree. The same-sex marriage movement doesn't convey any sense that it finds itself engaged in heartfelt discourse over a difficult subject with honorable opponents. 
If you disagree with them, you shouldn't even be allowed to sell chicken sandwiches. That's not the point at all. I don't care that you sell chicken sandwiches. I want you to sell as many chicken sandwiches as people are willing to buy. But what I do want to know is where your profits are going when they go to people that remove or discriminate against others and don't treat people equally. You can say, nobody wants people to go out of business, uh, at least not in my opinion. Just be aware that the truth is out there. Don't hide it. So when, when people on the conservative side make these conclusions that we're anti-business and anti-capitalism uh, and anti-success, it's merely a ruse. It, it, is, it is a ruse. Uh, and it, it's, it, this article goes on with Mitch, Richard Murdoch uh, being misquoted about his statement through not, being, not allowing abortion for children conceived through sexual assault. And it's, it's interesting to see the spin that these people create when the answer is simple. The information has been conveyed to you and communicated at a very clear message. But they're not listening. They're not listening because listening involves thinking. Um, see, now, this, this paragraph here remains to be seen if Marco Rubio's entirely reasonable I'm not a science answer to GQ's silly question will be sufficient to keep him away from the social issue abyss. He might have been better served by questioning the fundamental premises and strategy of the question. Newt Gingrich styles, what does that have to do with anything and why are you wasting time in an interview with a politician by asking him about geology? Well, because you're on the science committee. And if you're not a scientist, maybe you shouldn't be on the science committee. That's the point of the question. And this is why there's conflict. Um, so that's that's my first happy statement. Really shouldn't be representing the people in an area you don't know anything about. Um, I don't know about economics. So if you ask me about economic issues, I'm going to tell you I'm not an economist. Um, so I don't have a, a statement. And I'm not on an economic commission or a committee or or a panel. That's not what I've been chosen for. I've studied science, geology, biology, chemistry, and I'll offer opinions based on my knowledge and experience uh, on those subjects. Water treatment, all these things are, are things I'm comfortable with because I'm learned in them. I don't know why people have such a hard time understanding this. Next we go to number two. And number two is really a number two. This gentleman, Dr. Carl Beisner, was asked about climate change. I'm sorry, Cal Beisner. Cal is not a, a doctor of any science. So to ask him about climate change is like asking me about veterinary medicine. I don't, I don't have an opinion on it. But Carl goes on to say, that he believes that CO2 is plant food, it's fertilizer, and the global warming, climate change, greenhouse gas issue is of no concern. And it's actually, like it says here, an insult to God. The people conducting this interview have no problem with that. They nod approvingly and understand that, yeah, this guy's Right, of course he's right. His opinion is supported. But in fact, the short period of time that the CO2 and methane and water vapor, you know, the, the sulfur dioxide, all these pollutants that have been put into the air, uh, the atmosphere, is building up over time, concentrating. It's more than doubled over the last hundred years. So if it was plant food, oh, in addition, we're cutting down forests at an alarming rate, deforesting, denuding the planet. All you have to do is look at Haiti and Dominican Republic and see the contrast between those two that are, exist on the same island. Brazilian rainforests are being cut down by the size of like Rhode Island every day 
or every month or something like that. Just ridiculous amount of harvesting of trees, wood. So the CO2 concentration is going up rapidly. We're taking the carbon sinks, which are the trees, and in addition to the oceans, ocean stores a lot of CO2, but trees store a lot of CO2 as well. So we're cutting down trees, which releases the CO2 back into the atmosphere. Um, so that's adding to the concentration. The oceans are getting warmer, so they're unable to hold as much CO2 or continue to, to store it because warmer water does not hold gases. It does not absorb gases as, as efficiently and tends to you know, reach equilibrium. So his statement that this is fertilizer and plant food, if that were true, then the amount would be going down, not up. But nobody questions that. That's it's very frustrating. CO2 should be plummeting if this guy had any clue of reality. But he doesn't, and that's why he speaks for the GOP. It's not easy being green. And lastly, I just saw this come out yesterday, and I became very, very excited. Here is a gentleman that is spouting the most incredibly incredibly ignorant and factually wrong statements that I could ever be exposed to. Let's just move right on. Here we have Reverend Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's kid, president and the CEO of both Billy Graham Evangelist, the Evangelistic Association, an international Christian relief organization. Now, we've turned our back on God. I want you to listen to this. You said that Election Tuesday's results sent America further down a path of destruction. How will God judge us? In the last uh, four years, we have taken our, our, we began to turn our backs on God. We've taken God out of our education system. We've taken him out of government. Uh, you have you know, lawyers that sue you every time you mention the name of Jesus Christ in any kind of public law. And uh, what's happened is we, we have just allowed ourselves to, to take God out of everything that we do. And I believe God will judge our nation one day. I, I think that maybe God will have to bring our nation down uh, to our knees, uh, to where uh, you just have a complete economic collapse. And, and maybe at that point, maybe people will begin to, again to call upon the name of Almighty God. Okay. Actually, I hope you heard that. Now, did you hear that? It's going to bring us to the point where economic collapse. Wasn't the previous administration eight years of praying every day at cabinet meetings, invoking that God determines all the actions of Mr. Bush, he consults God first, He's, uh, the decision to invade Iraq, was based on a talk he had with God. God instructed him that was that was a righteous thing to do. All that doesn't make a difference. It's since since Obama has become president, now we have issues. Now is the problem, uh, and he says it in this article. The last four years, especially, uh, we've had an economic collapse since 2005, uh, based on the person that's been invoking God and asking for God's help. All I can say is that, that this guy is not paying attention, or at least he's, he's insane. Also recently, uh, Pat Robertson said that he misunderstood God's message when it came to the election, and he didn't understand why that President Obama shouldn't have been elected. So if we go to Pat Robertson and Mr. Franklin Graham here, I would proffer that they're worshiping the wrong God. Uh, if they continue to be frustrated and confused and, and, and exasperated at what's going on around them, God's plan's working quite well. And if, if they worship the right God, 
they would see that things are going great. Don't you think there's a, a large number of people that do believe in uh, this particular God that think that the re-election of President Obama was in his plans? How is it that both of those sides, just like the Civil War, both of those sides believe God is on their side? Uh, one's angry, one's happy. I don't know. It's crazy talk. It's sad. The Tea Party didn't get any any information. They didn't get the message. They're going, as long as you keep putting out people that lie to your face and ignore the truth and reality and continue to stick by this head in your sand attitude, they will continue to lose elections. There, there's no way I can support anybody that embraces this level of, of ignorance. And I think a large number of people feel the same way. I'm Chunks of Earth. So are you. Have a great Sunday.